Welcome to another Warmasters Workshop short. Today we're going to uh, talk about and show uh, wet sanding as it relates to uh, 3D printed uh, items. So this is a uh, 3D printed helmet. Those of you who uh, keep up with my Patreon will know this helmet well from various pictures that I have posted. but. I have went ahead and put a base coat of primer on here. Now we're probably going to have a couple layers of primer on this by the time it's all said and done, but um, this layer is our top layer and it's the layer that we're going to wet sand down. And uh, wet sanding is basically just using um, various fine grits of sandpaper um, and you soak it in water. It's, it's usually a special type. It'll do wet or dry. This is both wet or dry. This is 400 grit, and this is 600 grit. Uh, but you soak the paper in water, you get it wet, and that's what you sand with. And because the paper is wet, it keeps the sanded primer from caking onto the paper, and the paper tends to last longer, and it gives it a much better finish. Now, this helmet was prepped uh, by sanding it with uh, first with a 60 grit sandpaper, to get um, a bulk of the print lines out. And then I went over it with, um, with uh, 120, and then 150, and then 220. And then I sprayed a really thin layer of primer on just to see how my print lines were looking. And I went over that with 220 again, uh, wet sanded with a sponge. So then we put this the, the first actual base coat of primer on. And as you can see, there's not a lot of but really, it's hard to see any visible print lines. Now you go over here to the fin, and you can see there is some visible, there's some visible print lines, but they don't, you don't feel them. <clears throat> also, right up here in the front, there's some lining out right in here. So that's what the wet sanding is for now. And we're going to take this as 400 grit sandpaper here. I have a tub of water right here. Just a small bucket full. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold my paper up. Try to get some nice even folds here. So I'm going to do one, two folds, and then three, just like that. So now my paper has got four layers here. So you got one, two, three, four. That way I can unfold this and refold it and all kinds of stuff. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put, I'm just going to get my paper wet here with some water. And I'm going to start sanding in circles. And then I'm going to dip my paper back into the water. And do the same thing, continue sanding in circles. And then I'm going to wash my paper off again. You can see there's still a little bit of caking on here, but not nearly as bad as it, as it would be if you didn't wet the paper down. Now you do want to make sure you move your helmet around. You also want to make sure that you don't do a lot of one-way sanding. You want to you want to continue to sand in these circular motions. Now let's go ahead and let's wipe this down. I have a I have a rag here. I'm just going to wipe this off. Put this in the water to clean off. And now when you run your finger over this, this is smooth as silk. So let's take a quick glance. You can tell, actually, let me dry this off too because you're, you're gonna see a huge difference in this from one side to the, from one wet sanded side to the next. So here's the wet sanded side. So you can even see the, the light reflected off. Let's go to the other side here. That's the non wet sanded side and see it just looks dull and, and gray. But this is the wet sand, and this is what wet sanding does. It's why it's, 
That's why it's the really the best way to deal with with uh, primer on a especially on a three D printed object. But the goal here is to try to level this out and get rid of those print lines as much as humanly possible. Now, will you be able to get rid of all of them? Well, they won't all be gone with this first wet sanding. There will still be some because that's just the nature of the primer. I mean, if you look, it's just the nature of the object itself. If you look right here, let's see, can you see it in the camera? Right here, you might still be able to see them in the light. There's a few little bitty print lines right there. So the next coat of primer should catch those and take care of them. But they're still there. We still know they're there. This is also a, a somewhat light coat of primer. I did not want to overcoat it. Overcoating with primer is bad. It starts to pool. You'll get weird you know, pooling and drip marks and it's just not good. So go with light coats. If that means you end up pulling a little more off, that's fine. That's that's fine if more comes off while you're wet sanding. There's no you know, there's no like minimum amount of primer that you should leave behind. And you want to leave some behind, but the main thing is that it feels like it's glass smooth, just like that. I mean, to be honest with you, I wouldn't care if there was no primer left on here, as long as where there was primer, it felt as smooth as glass. I mean, it feels like you could just, like, like it's just glass. That's what you want. There really is no better way to explain it. The primer is less important as a primer. It's more important as a filler. And I am using Rust-Oleum Filler Primer for this. Um, it's a sandable. And it says it on the can that it is a sandable. I think I've still got it sitting outside or else I'd show you exactly what it looks like. But I'll, I'll put a link in the description so you can see exactly what I use. That would be the same brand that I would... Um, suggest that you use as well, the same type. I think a lot of people um, suggest it. And you can actually feel, as you're doing this, you can feel the texture, the surface texture begin to change. It'll go from being slightly rough to nice and smooth. You'll feel that as you're using your sandpaper. Alright, so I'm going to finish this helmet, uh, wet sanding the rest of this helmet, and then we will, uh, we're going to do another um, coating of it, or another uh, primer coat, and then we'll hit it with uh, 600 grit sandpaper, and then we'll go from there, alright? We've got our second coat of primer on our helmet, and now we just need to uh, do our um, our next phase of wet sanding with our 600 grit. So I've already conveniently folded up this piece of uh, 600 grit sanding paper. So we've got our our four uh, four little sheets here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and wet it down real good. I'm just using the same water I wet sanded I used in my in the last uh, 400 grit wet sanding. And I'm just going to do the same thing I did with the 400. I'm just going to go over this in circular motion. And of course with 600 you're going to get a little more caking onto the uh, on the sandpaper no matter what because it is such a high grit So we may end up going through a couple sheets of this 600 grit, but we have plenty, so not really worried about it. I've got my rag here so I can wipe this off, and this is such a nice, such a nice, beautiful finish on this.
one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to get worried if you do nick some some of the, if some of the paint does come off as you're sanding like right here on the corners a little bit has come off here on the corner that's not really a problem um, because <clears throat> if you're using this specifically for yourself you're going to be going over it with paint so that's not going to be a problem if you're doing using it to cast it's going to be I mean it's going to be smooth that's smooth as silk right there so I mean um, it's not a not a problem there either so The main thing you want to do is just get that really nice, smooth surface texture. Let your finger be the be the, the texture guide so you can feel exactly what that texture is like on the surface. And again, don't stress if you've got this little bit, if you've got some exposed edges. The main thing is that you run your finger across and you feel no nicks, no divots, none of that. Of course, we can't make circles here. So we just run our sandpaper down the the center of the mohawk here and we feel for rough areas. All right, so we've put our uh, final coat of primer on the helmet. And as you can see, it's, it's rough. So we need to get that um, wet sanded down. And to do that, we're going to use our final sandpaper grit which is 1000 grit it's very fine it's it's almost like emery paper at this point so i'm just going to fold it up like i've been doing previously it's going to be one two three folds and that should give us four different rectangles Then we have our we have a clean pail of water, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this sandpaper here nice and wet. And we're gonna start uh, doing our circular sanding just like we had before. Actually, before we do that, I'm gonna take my rag here and this cloth, and I'm just going to brush this off a little bit. There's just a little bit of um, primer residue on here. I just wanna get off so that it doesn't cause more caking on the sandpaper than we need. There we go. And that can happen sometimes when you're down to your last uh, last bit of primer in the can. So yeah, this paper is very wet now. It's sunk to the bottom. So let's go ahead and we're going to start wet sanding this. And since our layers beneath are um, very smooth, this should not require a whole lot of work, only in the more rough areas. The good thing too is that this thousand grit sandpaper, it actually washes off really nicely because the grit is so small or so fine that you don't get all of the uh, you don't get the caking nearly as bad as you do on the higher grit paper. 
Now there shouldn't be any need to sand all the way back down to the plastic. Um, you may, in some areas, get down to the plastic. It just depends on how thin um, the primer layer is in that area. But I think for the most part, uh, we're going to be fairly safe. There will be some, like there'll be some corners and that kind of thing. There's a little little corner right here where some plastic is showing, but it's not uh, it's not like it's a um, a chip in the paint or anything like that. It's just where it's um, wet sanded down, so it's it's still extremely smooth. Of course, you always want to try to stay in that circular motion if you can. Obviously, when you get up to these um, these places where angles meet, it's not always possible. So what I like to do is sort of do a circular up motion. So I start like right here at the brow, and then I do my circle. And I let the brow sort of be the the stopping point on the downward loop of the circle. So it's almost like making half circles. You can go start from the bottom and go up for a loop, or you can start from the, the, the uh, I should say, start from the back and do an upward loop forward, or you can start from the front and do an upward loop backward. You can alternate directions if you want to. See, we've got a little bit of the plastic coming through here, but that's fine because this is still smooth as silk. So you can see where the where we went through the primer down to the plastic, but this is still glass smooth, so I'm not not really worried about that. That's not really something to be concerned about. As long as it's smooth, as long as you do not feel like a transition between these, and you'll you'll know it if there was a transition, um, there would be a raise here, a line that you would be able to feel. And if you if there is a transition, that will uh, and you're making a mold that will absolutely translate over to the mold. So you don't want that, that's bad. Just a whole lot of sanding. And so I'm gonna keep sanding this and then we're gonna come back. We're gonna take a look at how this looks once it's wet sanded with a thousand grit sandpaper. So here we are with our helmet. <clears throat> Um, after we've hit it with a thousand grit sandpaper, as you can see, we still have, we do have a little bit of uh, protrusion here of the plastic, but when you run your finger over it, you don't feel, uh, you don't feel any uh, like separation between the two. There's no like chip feeling or anything like that. Um, what I like to do at this point is I just like to go over it just a little bit in some of these corners that may not have gotten, um, that might have been a little difficult to hit. Just try to hit those up. Smooth them down. There we go. But for the most part, this helmet is is pretty much glass smooth. Um, and it's ready to be molded. Now what we'll do when we get to the molding stage uh, which will be in a different video, but we'll cover this helmet with a um, with a sealer, <clears throat> with a liquid sealer, and that will take care of any porous areas that might be in the um, that might be in the primer. But see how well that gets? That's nice and shiny and just super smooth. I did wash this helmet, um, so. That helped it a little bit with uh, getting it cleaned off because I didn't want to continue to use the same dirty paint rag that I had been using. So anyway, so there's our helmet. That's how you uh, wet sand a uh, 3D printed helmet down to a mirror, nice mirror smooth finish or glass smooth finish, I should say. And from that point onward, you can either choose to uh, mold the bucket if it's your own design and, and cast it out of uh, resin, or 
at this point, you just need to start painting uh, your helmet. So, anyway, that's it. I hope you've, uh, hope you've learned how to wet sand from this short, and we will see you next time in the Will Masters Workshop.